Welcome to Undercover Arts Live, where you can meet the artists, chefs, performers, and organizations who shape the culture of Southern Arizona. Saka strengthens the bonds between people, place, and purpose through collaborative, arts-driven experiences. You can support Saka by becoming a donating member at Saka.org. Art inspires. Culture unites. Welcome to Undercover Arts Live. My name is Matt Rowland, and I'm the Director of Programs and Community Outreach with Saka. Our guest today is Enrique Hank Feldman, composer, author, educator, and public speaker. In addition to our conversation, he's going to share a talk called How to Reinvent Yourself as an Artist. All right, are you there, Enrique? I'm here. Thanks so much for joining us for Undercover Arts Live here. I'm really excited to, for all of our artists and audience to meet you. For those of you out there who haven't heard Enrique before, do you want to tell a little bit about your background and your music and who you are? Yeah, sure. I'm a native of Tucson and, uh, you know, traveled a good bit, have traveled a lot. And I've been back since 92. Um, and I'm a performing artist. I used to be the band director at the U of A. Left in 97. I'm a pianist now, back to my original instrument of piano. I played tuba for a long time. But piano and vocals, I love Latin fusion. I love gypsy music. I love ethnic stuff. And um, I really love uh, the vocals from the world of flamenco and you know, the, the world of Spain. And so I incorporated that into my scat. And I performed locally at a Cruy Tooth with a band called La Serico. And we play a lot of, uh, mostly almost all original. I'm also an author uh, of children's books, uh, and public speaker. Uh, I, I speak a lot on topics like how to reimagine and, um, and also on self care. Um, so, uh, in a nutshell, that's, uh, that's what I do. I'm a, I see everything I do through the lens of an artist. So, I'm a dad, a 25 year old son, a 25 year old daughter, a 21 year old son. My wife, Marie, is also a pianist, the voice chorus with a, a classical trio group. Uh, and I, just one more thing I'll say, what's interesting is how we all take journeys, journeys reveal things to us. So um, I started out classically trained, and I wanted to improvise, but I was kind of scared as a younger person. And today, I, don't, I, I, I play a lot of classical music. I, mean, I go to concerts, but I perform almost entirely music that's improvised. So it's been a really fun journey. Well, I've loved seeing your trio perform. It's an amazing group. So anyone out there hasn't seen Enrique perform, you should take a look at his calendar and find his date and go hear him. Thanks, man. So as you were mentioning and we've talked, you wear a lot of hats as an artist. Uh, you're a speaker. You're an author of a children's book series. You do a lot of health and wellness, also science research, the intellectual brainwave games. And when we were talking earlier, you said something that I think is so important that a lot of artists don't think about, which is the importance of branding yourself and branding your projects. So I was wondering if you could speak to how you think about branding, creative projects, your art, and yourself. That's a great question. Um, to be completely upfront with everyone out there, I did not used to think about branding at all. 20 years ago, I didn't the word branding never came to my mind. You know, I was a musician. I was a teacher, you know, and I didn't see myself as an entrepreneur. I saw that just as business, and I really wasn't interested in anything other than just making my music. So if that's you out there, I, that's cool. I totally get it. So when you think of branding, think of branding as another art form that can connect to whatever your current art form is. So today, what I have done, I have made sure that everything I do is authentic to who I am and the messaging that, uh, you know, that makes messages that are positive for the world and that make me feel proud to be who I am, how I was raised, et cetera, et cetera. So branding is not about, you know, making some other story up. Branding essentially shares your story. So if you think about who you are, the music you make, or the dance you perform, or the you know, visual art you create, whatever your art form is, the filmmaking, just think about what's important to you. So for me, it's things like curiosity, igniting it. And one of my brands is called Igniting Curiosity. Um, 
the Sam DeAnne brand is all about perspectives. It's all about adversity as ally, and it's all about um, diversity as strength. So really what branding is, is when you think of the message you want to share with the world, you break it down to the essence, which is uh, not as easy as it may sound. So when you break it down to the essence, the essence is a really good brand for us as individual artists. And when people get your brand, they really quickly can take a quick peek into who you are as an artist. What's unique about you is that you do have so many different projects that are all connected by you, right? And so sometimes someone can find one of those projects or your music, and then they're connected to another project that you're involved with, but it's similar but different. Yeah, 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 I will say this. I will say that all my projects have one through line, one thing that, you know, like in Lord of the Rings, one ring to rule them all. <laughs> Maybe not the best analogy, but the one thing, I really kind of do one thing, and that one thing is I build community. So whether it's the messaging of humanity united with my music, or whether it's the messaging of helping all children learn how to read or learn how to be more creative thinkers, whatever it is, it all comes back to building community. So that's another thing about branding is think about, like I'm sure a lot of you out there have different things you do. Um, embrace all of them. The idea that we have to do only one thing really well, or we will fall into the trap of doing many things only half fast. That honestly is a dinosaur idea. That is old. That, that's an old thinking that, we, in my opinion, does not serve us as artists, especially in today's world. So embrace the, the multiple uses of this. Well, speaking of that, my first email exchange with you many years ago was because I was looking for a storyteller. And someone said, you've got to email Hank. And you connected me with your daughter, but that was how I was introduced to the Sam the Ant series. I forgot so talk about, about that. Sam the, talk about Sam the Ant. There are a lot of people involved, different media involved. I'd love to have you speak to that project. Yeah, sure. So um, I'm really close to my kids, and that project came to life. Uh, my daughter is 25. 21 years ago when she was four, she looked at me and said, Daddy, I'm tired of the books you're reading to me. And luckily, I didn't say anything stupid like, well, those are the only books we have, young lady. I said, what do you want to do? And she said, I want to make our own stories together. Great. So we wrote down a couple of stories. She's a big fan of ants. And, uh, and we kind of set them aside. And when she was 21, we got serious. So I introduced my daughter to the ideas I had about branding for Sam Ann and what Sam Ann could be. But honestly, she's become a deep voice of that. She's amazing. Um, amazing human being, and, and things like, I kept referencing Sam as the key when we were first put together seriously at 21, about four years ago. And she called me on it. She said, why are you referencing, and this is connected to branding uh, very deeply. Um, and so I, she said, why do you keep calling Sam the key? Why does the, the he have to be a man uh, in this story or any story? I said, my God, that's where it's coming out with me not thinking about it. My apology. Sam can be a, a she or a girl aunt, whatever you want it to be. And she said, no, no, you don't get it yet. It really helped me out. What don't I get? She said, why don't we let the reader choose? And I was like, whoa, what do you mean? Like no pronouns? And Yeah, no pronouns in the English. So it, they're bilingual books. Um, kids who read them can think of whatever they need to think of them as. Sandy the Ant, same thing. Drag the Dragonfly is a he. So, and they fly around the world, um, and it's uh, it's really profound messaging for young kids, and it lives on samtheant.com. So that product it lives in the format of ebooks and hardcover books. It's self-published. Um, I have been published before by a publishing company, Red Leaf Press, my first book, Publishing Like a Child. But we chose to do this independently, and we're probably going to keep it that way. And then, again, my daughter suggested that we animate the ant for the brain games that have existed for online now for about a year. I invented them about 20 years ago. So, uh, the, and, and now we're actually having conversations with Major League Baseball, with their CTO, 
Uh, and they're, they, that actually like some of the, they love the character and the, the ant character. They love the brain games and we're talking up on jumbotrons. Um, and so, and, and I mean, there's a health company that's approached us for Sam the, uh, the spokes uh, creature. Uh, it's amazing the reaction to Sam the ant because it's, well, it's just good. It's goodness. It's positive stuff. You know, it's positive messaging. We're getting incredible feedback. So that's just a, a quick peek into the world of Sam the ant. Well, and that's great. And something that speaks to you is the importance of having a strong brand for your creative project because it's a full package. That's something like Major League Baseball or someone can look at that and say, this could be used for other things or I could take it other places. Right. So, you know, I mean, uh, for example, we've had a puppet made. And so we're eventually going to pitch. Um, we, we have a connection that we're going to use uh, through my chief technology officer, Nick Boso Tucson. Uh, his dad is Senator Dave Bradley. Uh, so Nate is amazing. And his connections, we're actually going to pitch to Sesame Street, which is now by HBO. We're going to new we're going to pitch the same thing. But, you know, for those listening, you never know what part of your world could become something that could be used in other areas like matches. Um, and honestly, I didn't want, want to, I didn't, you know, 20 years ago, I didn't sit down and make this big plan up. I just had some ideas and I followed them and some took a long time to come to fruition and some didn't. And we have to be willing as artists to improvise as much with ideas as we do with our music and bodies and paint or whatever. Um, so, you know, we, I think it's important to improvise in life. So how does your foundation tie into your work? You've started a foundation many years ago, and uh, some of your artistic work and creative work feeds into that. Uh, but just talk about having a foundation. What does that mean? It's something not a lot of artists do. Uh, I'm hoping you can introduce the idea to our audience. Yeah, sure. You know, for some people, I think it's a really good decision to have a foundation. So the reason I started a foundation was survival. Um, uh, which it, the foundation today looks so different than what it looked like in my head originally. And that's cool. That's a good thing. I think often we make plans that have too many barriers and, and we kind of put blinders on. That happens, things that could have been created. So my foundation, I started in 2000 after I left the University of Arizona. And basically I was trying to create a structure that could be hired, that could hire me. Uh, of course, like anything else, that you have funding. So I did something a little different, and this is something anyone could do. I thought about the people that were really close to me, that were well known and um, had a lot of credibility, and I invited them to be on my board of directors. I had to save up some money, had some part time jobs back then, and, and I had to save up $2,500, which was a lot of money for me in the year 2000. Um, and we started it out, and my, my board of directors came on board not to raise money, but to make connections. So if you're watching this, anyone can start a 501c3. It does not have to be a massive organization. Today, what is known as the Global Learning Foundation started out as the FAME Foundation, and when we, we're still known as the FAME Foundation. And so um, what's, what's interesting and I think helpful for everyone to remember or to know about uh, nonprofit work is if you're willing to partner with other organizations, you can accomplish a lot. So check this out. In the last 19 years, our first year was an organizational year. In the first 19 years, uh, we have served a total of 135,000 children and families. And we do that by using the as a way of learning. And so we've done that by partnering with organizations like United Way and uh, Head Start, and, uh, Community Foundation of Arizona, Local First Arizona, now the Greater Oro Valley Chamber of Commerce as well. So if you're willing to not reinvent the wheel all the time, I think you can do a lot in a small nonprofit. You know, financially, we're, um, we, we carry no salaries. Um, I hire independent contractors. I'm really picky about who I hire. We outsource our payroll. And our you know, I think one year we were in low six figures as a budget just to be transparent. Every other year, we're like 70, 80 grand. It's not a lot of money. It's not what I make all my living, um, but, uh, we, you know, since we hire the people out. But the point being, you don't need a lot of money to get a lot done. 
through partnerships, we're known, well, that's why our name change. We're known all over the world. So it's pretty, pretty cool. Right. That's very cool. So you've prepared a special talk today to share with artists of Southern Arizona. So what would you like people to take away from this talk? Um, I think uh, I'd like everyone to take away some concepts that will really help us think in new ways and also some very specific strategies, very specific strategies, how we can make a living again, um, how we can, even during these adverse times, create partnerships. There's some really, uh, I tell one true story on there. The others are all lies. Just kidding. They're all, they're all true. But there's one really cool story about a restaurant. I won't give it away. Uh, but something they did was really unique. And I, I, I mentioned to Matt uh, how I think we as an artistic community can begin to connect um, and create different venues, some of them virtual. Awesome. Well, let's take a look at that. Hello, Saka. Uh, Matt, thanks for all your help and uh, welcome everyone, artists in the incredible area of Southern Arizona, uh, here in Tucson and other, you know, suburbs and areas near Tucson. Uh, I'm Enrique, some people know me as Hank, uh, so Enrique Feldman or Hank Feldman, whichever you know me as, and I'm a performing artist and I've been chatting with Matt and others and uh, this is a, a, it's just a talk, I, I got my, uh, you know, cup of uh, keto coffee here and just hanging out. So I created a presentation. I speak a lot um, around the, the world um, and when I perform, sometimes separately from performing. Uh, and I'm also an author. So I'm, uh, I'm an, uh, an artist in a lot of different ways. I'm a native of Tucson and uh, I've created uh, some content here and concepts that I'm going to share with you. Uh, I've created over the last 20 years and uh, because of what's going on today, I, I wanted to reach out to my fellow artists. Um, so you can see my one of my links at the bottom there. And uh, today's about not just redefining, but reinventing. So a lot of us do this already, but a lot of us may be in a position where we've been doing certain things for a long time, beautiful things, creating great art, great music, great dance, uh, you know, woodwork, whatever it is you do, um, you know, Sonora and glass blowing company, whatever, whatever you do as an artist. And all of a sudden things have changed and we don't know what the new norm is going to be like. So it can be very unsettling for a lot of people, for most people. It has been unsettling for me, not as much as for others, because over the last 20 years, uh, I have been reinventing and just designing my own career as I go along and it's expanded in different ways. And it's been fantastic. I love what I do. But if, um, if, that's not you, you may be in a position where, holy crap, what do we do now? So let me dive right in. Um, and uh, let me see here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Tech thing here. There we go. Almost. And we're off. There we go. So just really quickly, so you know a little more about me and what I do. So you, just so you know where I'm coming from. Um, so you can take a peek at the different things I do. And feel free to reach out to me if you have specific questions. You can get a hold of me at most of these sites. Uh, I should say samdeant.com. Sorry about that. That's kind of a given. I forgot the C-O-M. Uh, you can get a hold of me uh, most easily at the foundation site or the Hank, uh, or the at the bottom, the public speaker, Enrique C. Feldman site. They both have a contact button. I think the others do, but I'm not sure. So this gives you an idea. I'm a performing artist. I'm also a dad. My kids are 25 and 21. I'm married to Marie Sierra, a pianist um, extraordinaire. She's a classical pianist with the two centers and a voice chorus and with a group called Nota Bene. I play with a group called um, Acereco. We play at Crooked Tooth uh, Brewery and then we play at a lot of other events. So the bottom image is at Crooked Tooth and the top, I'm scatting. I love to scat. I do a lot of ethnic music, a lot of Latin jazz. So like all of you, I love what I do. And boy, do I miss some things? Absolutely. So it's okay to just say that, right? Like I, I, miss, uh, I miss performing live. I miss hugging my parents, you know? Man, it's a crazy time. But um, adversity can be our ally if we think of it in certain ways. And that's something I was taught a long time ago. So let's continue. Oh, wow, it's going to get really picky with me. Here we go. 
I'll just leave it right there. So uh, real quick intro on um, isolation. You may be feeling isolated. I know a lot of people are, uh, especially emotionally, especially if we're used to being out and about. Uh, so I do like to be around people. I miss people I don't even know at coffee houses, man. Um, so what can we do for ourselves as artists? So one thing I want to just make sure you're aware of, just reminding, I'm sure you know this, but when we can continue our creativity and continue producing things of beauty, um, it does really powerful things for our psyche. The challenge is when we feel isolated, we sometimes don't want to do anything. We don't have the motivation or feeling. Some people feel very motivated in times like these, like I do, but some people don't, and that's okay if you don't, but you want to find a way to create again and keep creating because it spurs us on. It helps other people too, but we want to make sure we're also taking, you know, self-care of ourselves. Um, so let me break it down. So today there'll be some concepts and very specific strategies on also how to uh, you know, make, make a living. So I'll, I'll get into some details here in just a moment. So regarding this idea that you see on the screen, um, we want to make sure we remember whether you're a workout person or not. I didn't used to be, I, I am now for the last 10 years or so I've been someone who works out daily, but you might not be, and that's cool. Um, but do something. All right. So we want to get the energy flowing. I encourage you strongly to look at things like yoga, um, things like Pilates, but even just taking a walk, and if you're going to, here's one tip, okay, if you're going to go for a walk, let's say with your family or just yourself, um, walk as fast as you can for 30 seconds, and then for 60 seconds, just go back to a regular walk, and toggle back and forth between 30 seconds really fast, like swinging your arms, and 60 seconds of regular walk. Do that for at least 20 minutes, and one, you'll burn a lot more calories, you'll wake up your metabolic system, and you'll alert your mind. It'll feel good, all right? You'll give yourself a little dopamine hit and you'll feel better, right? So I could go on and on in the area of that, uh, but that's just one part of today's session. Brain-wise, we wanna create, um, we wanna introduce newness, new ideas to ourselves, all right? So I'll get to that in just a moment, but if we don't introduce new ideas to our brain, we can get complacent and bored, and that can lead to things like depression and anxiety. So newness, new things to eat, you know, I'll show you a specific thing we can do for our brains in just a moment. And then our, I'll get to this near the end of the session, but um, our thoughts and our words matter profoundly. We all know this, but do we practice it? Um, so it's really easy in times like this to kind of get down, you know? Um, and then if you have, no, you know, I, I'm not perfect, uh, you know, so uh, it's, uh, it's something that we just need to remind ourselves. Um, that uh, our, our thoughts um, have measurable energy. It's, you know, we, we've all known this as artists, man. We, we get energy, right? Um, but science is finally caught up and they can measure the energy of our thoughts. A very cool thing, actually. And something as simple as this, just helping someone else out, virtually, obviously, or, or if you're self-quarantining with some family members, just helping people out. It, 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 we all know it feels good, but we forget sometimes. So I've been reaching out to a lot of friends, texting friends, emailing friends, who I probably haven't, I have spoken to a lot less than maybe I had thought I, I would have liked to have been in more contact with them, but um, I'm getting back in contact with them now. So there is one small example of adversity as an ally. I'm like, hey, you know, how's my friend Billy Montgomery doing? I'm gonna, I'm gonna text him and then hit him up on some type of virtual conferencing system, right? And maybe play a tune for him. So I just wanted to touch base with that and kind of start with that and this, just take a quick look at that, maybe take a picture of it or something. This is something that will really help us as artists and an artistic community as we begin to reinvent and look at ways of how we can make a living again. And, and hopefully things will get back to some sort of normal. But when we create things, it ignites this idea of, you know, the opposite of scarcity, abundance. We begin to feel emotionally secure again. Then our mental clarity comes back and then we can begin to reinvent. But if we don't take the previous steps here before reinventing, if I were just to say to you, you gotta reinvent yourself, yeah, whatever, you know, BS, well, how do you do that? This is how you do it conceptually. Now, each of these things is a, a workshop all in of itself. And today is really more of a buffet, little kind of a potpourri, some different ideas. So let's dive in. I just wanted to give you some context. You're gonna need your 
hands and arms and fingers free. I'm going to take you through some brain games that I invented 20 years ago with my foundation. And um, this is one quick example of how to embrace newness and how to invite newness into your life. So these are games you can play at home with your kids, with yourself, whoever. So I'll start with a simple brain game. Uh, arms crossed. One, two, ready, and in time with the music. So I'm a classical musician. I'm also Latin jazz, ethnic, I'm classically trained, but I mostly play a lot of jazz and ethnic stuff. Now this is pretty easy, I sure hope so, because that, that was a four-year-old brain game. Okay, so don't get too excited. Let's jump over to adult brain game and let's see how you do. Okay, so for the adult brain game, I want you to have a finger here, not here, here, a thumb not down, but a thumb that is in, and a thumb straight up. Ready? One, two, ready, and switch. Switch, switch, how you doing? Now as an artist, you're probably doing better than most adults, because we have physiologically different brains, depending on a lot of other issues. You might be having some real issues here, all sorts of, you know, of variations. And even if you do have an artist brain, this is probably new. We don't, when I see Matt at a gig or something or an event, I don't go, hey Matt, yo, how's it going? We, we say hi like this, we don't say hi like this, right? So we want to alert our brains. If our brains get old, we get old very quickly. Let's try a couple more. So for your kids, head, elbow, switch, in time with the music is critical. At the half note or whole note, quarter note, have fun with it, right? So for a young kid that might be a bit of a, you know, under three, they can do it, they can figure it out. Let's remind ourselves what newness feels like, right? So let's try one for adults. So you're gonna need an ear right here and a nose. Ear and nose. And one, two, three, and switch, two, three, switch, two, three, yeah. Switch, 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 right? Let's try one more and then we'll go on. Hand here, hand here. Square, square. Early childhood, young kids can do this, right? and crossing over the midline, which is a big deal for your brain. But this is still pretty easy for you. So let's do a, a, an adult version. A square, triangle. So triangle first, and hold, square, square. So square and triangle. One, two, ready, and good luck. Have fun with it. Don't get all frustrated if you're not doing it perfectly, they're messing up, or what we call as adults messing up. <laughs> so newness. This is a physical, visceral example of newness. How often do we write music in a different genre? How often do we write poetry or whatever we do? We're a, we're a cook, whatever it is. How often do we really go somewhere new? Usually as adults, not often enough. Now as artists, we're better at this than most people, but even us, even in our artistic community, right? Uh, we sometimes kind of miss the, the opportunities. So uh, let's, let's move on. So let's dive into some more specific ways of how we can uh, do this and how we can uh, uh, begin to reinvent, uh, reinvest, uh, redesign, reimagine. So this is my wife, Marie. And here we are hanging out the world's largest rum collection on Calle Ocho in Miami, Florida. My wife's Cuban, taught me how to salsa dance. Mm. And I'm very grateful because I've fallen in love with the Cuban culture, really all of that, the Caribbean music, all that stuff. I love it, man. You know. So one obvious thing we can all do is we can be giving online lessons. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because if you need help learning how to use technology, this is not that session for that. But Matt, I'd be happy to help out. There are probably other people who know even more than I do. I'm pretty tech savvy. My wife is not that tech savvy, but has gotten so much better. She's teaching around 20 individual piano lessons a week now online, right? She's using FaceTime, which, which um, lags a lot sometimes and it freezes up. So I've been looking into other platforms. So we all need to be looking at platforms and see what works best. 
um, and people are PayPaling her or Apple Pay or whatever. So it's not it's not the same. It, it's not the same. We know that, but it allows us to make somewhat of a living, right? And we begin to find better ways to use technology. Uh, then there's adversity as um, ally, the, the concept which I've mentioned, and what this universal thing. So my my basic sharing with you on this image is, look, people always have loved music and people have always loved going to live music venues. And here we are in a time where they can't. This is an opportunity for us as an artistic community to up our game individually and as a group. Matt and I have been talking about some cool ideas and I'll get to those in a moment. But right now, if you, and let's say you don't teach, let's say you don't like to teach, use a different word and think anew. How about sharing your art form with the community? I, a colleague of mine, Naeem Amor. Naeem, how you doing, man? I hope you're on, checking this out. Um, him and other groups I know, Nick Coventry, I, I play with Nick sometimes. And they, they've been, uh, I know Naeem was gigging and they, they had a, a donation uh, button where you could donate if you wanted to. Great idea, man, that's a great idea. You know, I'm gonna take it a step further today. But so, you know, there are those obvious things we can be doing using technology. Um, so let me go on to the next slide here. So here we go, right? So uh, this last four or five minutes is about how we can expand what we do and look at new ways of making it happen, right? So here's a question for you. Think about this. So all artists, no matter what you do, and I didn't, I didn't list every single way of being an artist, obviously. I know there are many, many ways. Um, I think teaching is an art form. I think parenting is an art form. But today I'm talking mostly about us who make a living as performing artists. Before I forget, if you haven't applied yet for the Artist Relief Fund, I'm assuming you know about that. I hope you know about that. Do a search for Artist Relief Fund. It's a $5,000 grant. You don't have to pay it back. It's not a loan. Um, so check it out. Uh, and it's a relatively easy compared to other forms I've seen a thing to fill out. And they're going to have like five rounds going all the way through September. So uh, if you don't get a funding in the first round, which ended April 23rd, the second round is just starting. And then there's a third, fourth, and fifth, and I think sixth round. So check that out. Um, but how can we do it ongoing? How can we make a living ongoing again before things get to whatever normal looks like, right? Um, so who do you connect with? And what I mean by that is, Maybe a different kind of question. I, I'm going to ask you to think about where you do your stuff. Right now, you might be doing DoorDash. I get it. Or you, I'm cooking. I'm the cook in my family, cooking a lot at home. But when things began to open up, and even before, where did you used to eat? Where did you used to shop? Who do you know in town? Do you know? Maybe it's Julie Vernon at Crooked Tooth. Maybe it's um, you know the folks at the Exo Roast. Maybe it's Prep and Pastry. Maybe it's the folks at Baja Cafe. Think about where you've gone and where you go, right? Or La Cocina, wh wherever it is in town. Think about that for a moment. And here's a story leading to something we can do that maybe you haven't thought of. So the other day, I got an email from Prep and Pastry uh, owner, Nate Aries, and he also owns Commoner. And I know Nate because my son works at Commoner. Well, used to work, hopefully again in the future. So they put out a really cool idea they got a little extra side funding from one of their longtime, I think, uh, restaurant um, clients, customers. And uh, they gave them some money to go buy the ingredients for uh, 200 little bags. And each bag were the ingredients for a dish called pasta carbonara. Great dish, man. And um, so the first 200 people that responded were able to go and pick up. And this was not designed for um, like, this was designed for people uh, in a, any demographic, but obviously like my parents, they go to the food bank. That's a different demographic because my parents aren't doing so well. Uh, and I, I bring food to them and help them out. So this was a, a business idea by this group of restaurants. So I went and picked up my bag of pasta carbonara, some stuff, you know, a little bag of it. And, uh, and then later that day, their chef did a live Zoom of um, him teaching everyone how to cook this dish. And it was really fun. What if after that cooking experience, while the 200, fam 200 families were eating their pasta, actually it was 250 people, they had so many people who wanted to be on it. 
what if they all had an option to click a button to hear your music? Right? Pretty cool idea, right? So we all know what Spotify is, but I'm not talking about Spotify. We all know what Pandora is or was, Apple Music, iTunes. We know what that is, but I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about is why can't we as an artistic community create a local version of that? And I kind of run this idea by Matt, we're gonna jam on it, but you don't have to wait for us to jam on that. Who do you know? Do you know someone who owns a cafe who's doing a design, uh, you know, uh, to go, take out, delivery, right? Can you call them or email them and say, hey, when you email out your, your food, do you wanna offer for another buck or two, or I don't know what it is, I'm, I'm just thinking about this, uh, for, for five bucks or, or whatever, or, or do a deal with them. I don't know, or, or maybe you get some free food and a little money on the side. I'm not sure what it looks like. Yet. But this is how reinventing starts. It starts with an idea and we don't have the plan yet. Now for certain personality types, I understand that is an uncomfortable approach. <laughs> Hang in there with me. This is what I've done ever since I left the U of A as, a, as I was the band director there, 92 to 97. This is how I started thinking differently than how I was taught to think. I was taught to make a plan, blah, 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 blah. I don't really, I have plans, but first I start with ideas. So think about that. We'll get back to you. Don't wait for us. Think about who you know and start a conversation with people who own retail stores and or restaurants, whatever. And go, yo, I could make some music. I could send you a, a group, a, a file with MP3s, whatever, right? So that's an idea I wanted to share with you. And what else can you offer? You know, when retail stores are gonna to start to open up down the road a bit, why do they have to play canned garbage music? Here's an opportunity, reach out. And we need to do this as a group, Matt, right? And we can do this individually. We need to reach out to Buffalo Exchange. We need to reach out to the different retail stores, including the local, you know, the Trader Joe's of the world and, and um, you know, the local markets and got, got in the city. Yes, who knows? I mean, why not? Why not? Why not approach Park Mall? They're here in Tucson. They're not somewhere else. They're here in our city, our community. Why can't they be performing and probably playing playlists that include people here? I would love to hear Nick Coventry's music, all right? All right. I mean, I have so many friends who play in town. I, 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 I shot. I mentioned Nick, I just gave him someone a prop. Now everyone else, oh, where's my prop? Sorry, I shouldn't have done that. Nick, love you. All right, so, <laughs> so wrapping this up, who can you connect with? Here's some other ideas. Elder communities, they are stuck in their, in their homes, their elder homes with all their other elderly friends. I, I don't mean elderly, I mean elders in, in a respectful, honoring way. And so, you know, what, what do they have going? We should reach out as an artistic community and individually, who can you reach out to? I already mentioned grocery stores. What about educational groups? What about schools? What about schools? Can we give them a history of the world from a musical perspective? This is what I mean when I say adversity as an ally. And we can teach them what I call the artist way of living. The artist way of living. What if everyone began to live with the kind of energy and idea and awareness of flow and the awareness of, of what it feels like to share openly with other people. Man, it'd be a more beautiful place, right? More beautiful community. Real quickly, my grandma, right? And she would look at me when I was really tiny and say one of two things. She'd look at me and say, everything you touch turns to gold. Or she'd look at me and say, mijito, everything in here can be out there. Man. She's an incredible woman, even though she only had a sixth grade education. She was rich in thought and she read to me and educated herself, even though she wanted more formal education, she couldn't get it for many reasons. She grew up in Nogales and um, she taught me about the power of the mind. So again, mind your thoughts carefully. If you don't meditate, man, start today, start today. Just go online, Google meditation, go online, Google yoga, if you're new, basic yoga. If you can't move real well, uh, Google uh, chair yoga. It's awesome. My parents do a little bit of that, mostly my mom. So, yeah, so I mean, that's, that's I, think, I think that's it. Yeah, so here's the last image. So keep doing what you're doing, you know? Um, you know, I, I, I love to scat. I, 
that. I, I, that's a Burke's works uh, by Dizzy Gillespie. Um, you know, I, I miss my buddy uh, Bubba Foss, you know, Abacetico and Sean Gale on piano. I mean, piano, I'm on piano. Sean's on guitar, Nick Coventry on um, violin, you know, all sorts of folks have played with us. But, you know, and all our ancestors, if we think about what they went through, man, they went through some heavy stuff, right? I mean, we're talking about genocide. They went through all sorts of things. And yet here we are. Here we are. So let's keep creating the stuff we create. And we live in a beautiful community of Tucson. We're fortunate. So even if we're having really hard times, there are some people having even harder times. We'll get through this just like our ancestors. What I'm already noticing is that people are becoming more grateful. Are there some yahoos out there who are still just, you know, being whatever, just doing whatever? Yeah, yeah, that will always exist to a certain point. But mostly what I'm seeing is people really grateful for such simple pleasures in life. I know I am, I'm sure you are. And we're gonna create things. I, I, I'm, I already am, and I hope today stirred your idea pop in your head to go, what, what else can we create? Who can we connect with? Hey, so um, uh, ha have a, a great day. Um, create beauty in your life, create wellness with your thoughts, take care of your body, eat as much raw food as you go, and I better stop because I've got like four other workshops coming out of me right now. So anyway, take care. And um, I want to thank Matt uh, and everyone at Saka for all the great work they're doing. And I, um, you know, you, you guys are fantastic. And I'm here looking for the right button. There it is. Stop recording. Peace out, man. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Enrique. It's really been great to have you on the broadcast and uh, share this live with all of our audience. Oh, my pleasure, Matt. I mean, you're doing a great job. Saka is awesome. And this artistic community we live in is so unique and so beautiful. So I hope everyone enjoyed the information I shared. And feel free to reach out to me if you have uh, individual. What is the best way for people to follow you and to watch you in the future and stay in touch? Uh, the best way, there are several. You can go to Enrique C. Feldman, my name with a C in the middle, dot com and click on blog and get on my newsletter. That's a really cool way to do it. Another way to do it is um, uh, to email me. So you can just email me, which is my first name, Enrique. My name is Hank. Last name is Feldman. Enrique Hank Feldman. Uh, and then on Facebook, I've got, I'm on, I'm all over Facebook. And I'm very active on LinkedIn. So if you look at my name, Enrique Hank Feldman on LinkedIn, connect with me there. And then the band name, Acerico, A-C-E-R-E-K-O. So Acerico is on uh, Facebook as well. Great. Well, thanks so much, Enrique. Yeah, thank you. Have a great day, Matt. Take care.